The Toy State Bond cars were released in 2012 to correspond with the 50th anniversary and the release of Skyfall. Living in the UK, these almost passed me by, as I'd never heard about them and they weren't sold anywhere. They seemed to become much more readily available in the years following. There were always new versions of the models that I was discovering, but I finally got myself a comprehensive list. It's spreadsheet time. The Toy State website is a bit rubbish, with some models mentioned that don't seem to exist, and some models not mentioned at all that do exist. However, in owning some of the models, I can see on the back which cars exist within that set. There are six different sets to collect, three of which simply have lights and sounds, the other three being remote controlled. They range in size and therefore in price also. The sizes and scales are approximate to give you an idea of the range available. One thing to note, just in case you were unsure, is that these are not die-cast models, but instead made of strong plastic. Don't buy them expecting top-notch detail, these are primarily made for playing with. The models that have sounds have an array of buttons on the roof that activate different things. One button generally sets the wheels going, one plays an engine noise and flashes the lights, and one plays a tinny version of the Bond theme. The priciest model, the For Your Eyes Only RC, also has a button to flip the car up and put it onto its side, so I believe it can drive on two wheels. This would explain the seemingly random inclusion of the Mustang. I haven't taken it out to test, but it was doing crazy things within the box and I pressed the button to see what happened. I can only assume this will look impressive when out of the box. Being the collector I am, I haven't taken the cars out to test the RC function, so I can't comment. The remotes are two-channel though, so two cars can race alongside each other. When nieces and nephews visit, I do have to avoid the temptation of ripping open the boxes and having a race of them. One useful thing about the website is that they've revealed a new model is on the way. That's right, the new Aston Martin DB10 from Spectre is going to feature in the collection. There's been no confirmation from Corgi about a model for this car, probably because it would mean they'd have to actually make a new car rather than recycle the DB5 once again. So this could be the first affordable model of this car. There are some die-cast models being produced, but they are almost £200. Once I know more, I'll add a comment to this video. There are a few negatives about the collection. The smallest variety of the cars is a little too expensive for my liking. They could easily have made them a more affordable £7 to £10. The box is a nightmare if you want to display them, as they don't have a plastic covering over the viewing area of the box. It's open so you can access the buttons. Dust is a major pain. And the final thing is that Toy State have been taking lessons from Corgi. As you'll notice from the spreadsheet, five of the six sets have two DB5s. The only difference is a minor change to the packaging to edit the name of the film. But as a collector, your collection isn't complete until you have them all, so they know they've got you between a rock and a hard place. But these are only minor issues. For their intended purpose, kids' toys to race around the living room and to annoy the hell out of everyone with the 50th rendition of the James Bond theme, these no doubt proved to be great fun, proving the RC controls work well. From a collecting point of view, they may not be the nicest models in the world, but they aren't made for that. Remote-controlled Bond cars, particularly large 1-14 to scale models, aren't common, so they do add something to a collection rather than having yet another die-cast figure. And having said all of that, at the end of the day, they are official Bond merchandise, so if the cars are part of your collection, you'll have to get these too.